This morning is the fourth Sunday uh, in my Advent sermon series. Uh, the four weeks before Christmas is Advent, the time we look back at the coming of Jesus, look forward to his return. And I've been preaching through the names of the Messiah this month, some of the names that show up in the Old and New Testament referring to this Messiah. The Messiah is the Hebrew word for Christ. Christos is the Greek word where we get Jesus Christ from, Jesus the Messiah. The Messiah is the anointed one, the king descended from David who will restore Israel to glory. That is who they were expecting, this Messiah figure that we celebrate on Christmas. And so three weeks ago, we looked at the name Emmanuel from Isaiah 7, how Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Two weeks ago, we looked at Isaiah 9, where it talks about Jesus as Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And then last week we looked at Isaiah 53 and how he is the servant of the Lord. This week we're going to look at a phrase that shows up in both Isaiah and John. It's called the light of the world. The fourth name that we're going to look at for the Messiah is the light of the world. So Isaiah 9, I'm going to begin just reading Isaiah 9, 1 through 2. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. This is the same passage where in a few verses, he's going to say that this great light that's going to dawn in the darkness is going to be this child will be born, will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And then John, one of the four gospel writers, begins his gospel by referring to this light, this great light who will come in the darkness. And so let me read John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, referring to Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was the life, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God, and his name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of human descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let me pray before we continue. Lord, we pray that you would please open our ears to hear and open our hearts to understand what this means. Reveal yourself as the light of the world this morning, that we might see you clearly. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, what's the significance of this name, this phrase, the light of the world, that the Messiah is the light of the world? I'm going to share three things that I think this means for us. And the first is this that Jesus shows us the way to go. You think of the purpose of light and what happens when a light shines in the darkness. It shows us direction. It shows us the way to go. If you've ever tried walking in pitch blackness, walking in the woods at night or something like that, you know the difference it makes when you have a light to shine on things. And it's not just about walking physically in the darkness, of course. It's also about walking in this world and living in this world that trying to make your way in this life and trying to figure out which direction to go with your life and what to do with your life, there's a whole lot of darkness in that. There's a whole lot of confusion. There's a great verse, I'm sorry, verse, a great quote that came to mind as I was reflecting on this by Thomas Merton. He says, people may spend their whole lives climbing the ladder of success only to find once they reach the top that the ladder is leaning against the wrong wall. It's a great sobering quote, especially for some of us who may be getting on in years to look at our lives and to see how far we've gone in our lives and how much we've climbed. And and then all of a sudden we look and say, wait a minute, I'm on the wrong ladder. I just spent my life climbing a ladder that I should not have been climbing. I wish I had been climbing a different ladder. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of darkness. 
and trying to know which way to go and how to live our lives is not that easy when there's so many voices out there telling you which way to go. And Jesus said this. When he spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He doesn't claim that there's many lights out there, there's many paths to God. He says, I am the light of the world. And again, as we've often said, these claims of Jesus are crazy, aren't they? If he's not truly who he says he is. If I were to get up here and say to you, I am the light of the world, follow me, and you'll never walk in darkness, you would think I'm pretty egotistical. But Jesus says this because he is the light of the world. He is who he claims to be. And if you follow him, you will never walk in darkness. And he doesn't say that there's many lights out there. You can follow him or you can follow another light. In fact, this is what he says about some of the leading religious leaders of his day. The disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? And he replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by its roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. I dare say that this is your life, some of you, or the lives of some people you know. You're a blind person trying to make your way in a dark world, listening to blind guides who you think are leading you towards life and towards light, but in reality, they are leading you towards a pit because it's a blind guide. And if a blind man leads a blind man, they will both fall into a pit. But Jesus is the light of the world. And whoever follows him, he says, will never walk in darkness. There are many blind guides out there leading you. Think about what Jesus said. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self? You know, maybe you don't follow Jesus, and maybe you follow some other gurus or teachers or self-help people out there, and you look at your life, and you know what? I've done pretty well for myself. I've made a good living. I've got a good family. got a good thing going here. And Jesus says to you, what good is it to gain the whole world and yet forfeit your soul, to forfeit yourself? What good is it to climb a ladder that's leaning up against the wrong wall? What good is it? You're only going to end up falling into a pit when you follow the blind guides. But Jesus is the light of the world. He lights the way by his word, by his spirit. Think of Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. You want to know how to follow Jesus since he's not physically here? Read the Bible. Follow his words. Or Psalm 19, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. And the commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Jesus is the light of the world. This world is full of darkness and confusion. There are a lot of guides out there that are blind guides guiding you in ways that are going to lead you to destruction. But Jesus is the light of the world. And he leads first and foremost by his word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And he leads as well by his Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, which we read already this morning, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. You have the Trinity there, the Father, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to be God's presence in us, to illuminate our path, to give light to our eyes, to help us know which direction to go. As it says in John 16, when he, Jesus said this, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. So once more, Jesus is the light of the world. This world is full of darkness and confusion. There are many guides out there trying to tell you this is the direction to go, but if you follow them, they will be blind guides who will lead you to a pit. But Jesus is the light of the world, and he leads by his word. He leads by his spirit. 
And so if this morning you are in need of guidance, if you are in need of wisdom, if you do not know which direction to go, then pray along with this prayer of James. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Before we move on to point two, let's just take a moment. Why don't you take a moment between you and Lord and pray? If you are in need of wisdom, if you are in need of guidance, take a moment between you and the Lord and just pray right now. Lord, I do pray that you would be our light and light the way. Give us your wisdom. Help us to know which direction to go as we follow you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, I was 18 years old when I came to faith in Jesus, and I have a before and after to look at, and I know that there are ways in which the ways I thought were the ways to go. Once I came to know Jesus and he put his Holy Spirit, I began to see the world differently. It wasn't because someone taught me or told me anything. It was just he had put his Holy Spirit. I was regenerated. I was made new. And the things that before had seemed like the right things to go after and do, now all of a sudden were not. And the things that I had never given thought to before, now all of a sudden were the things I wanted to give my life to. C.S. Lewis was someone who came to faith later in life as well. He has this great quote. He said, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun is risen, not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. Not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. Jesus is the light of the world. Do you know him in that way, or are you still walking in darkness? So that's the first significance of the light of the world, that he lights our way. He shows us the way to go. He gives us that direction. The second significance is this, that Jesus reveals what is in our hearts because that's the second thing that light does. It not only shines the way to go, but it also, when it shines on us, it reveals things that we cannot see ourselves, right? When you turn the light on, it shows you things that you couldn't see before. Psalm 90, verse 8. You've set our iniquities before you and our secret sins in the light of your presence. There's an exposing that happens, right? There's a revealing that happens. When Jesus comes into your life, when he shines his light, you see things that you didn't see before, like an HD television showing up things in fine detail that you never saw before. It's part of what Jesus, as the light of the world, does. It shines that light on your heart to reveal what's in there. And not everyone wants to be exposed, right? Not everyone wants to be exposed. John three nineteen to 21, Jesus said, This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. You think about what happens when a light shines in you. Some, of, some people, it brings them, you know, a lot of joy having light, but others turn away because it's such a bright light. And it seems to be a picture of what's happening here that sometimes the light comes and people turn away from the light. It's just because some people don't want to be exposed. They don't want to walk in the light. They want to be continue to walk in the darkness and do whatever it is they want without walking in the light of the Lord. Jesus is the light of the world, and he reveals our hearts, and he will one day, when you stand before him, reveal your life, your heart, your motives, everything that you thought was hidden on that day that you stand before him. And 1 Corinthians tells us this about that day. If any man builds on this foundation, the foundation of Jesus, without, I'm sorry, using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. On that day, he says, the light of Jesus will expose everything in your heart, every motive, everything you've ever done, everything you've ever said. And some things it says, like a fire will burn it up. It'll have been useless. It'll be a waste of your life. 
only what is done for him will survive. First Corinthians 4, 5 says as well, Therefore, judge nothing before its appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. Jesus is the light of the world. He shows us which way to go. He directs our paths, and he also reveals what is in our hearts. And on that day, he will reveal everything. So the best thing you can do is pray again a prayer that we find in Psalm 139. This is a great prayer to to ask the Lord. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Again, before I move on to point three, take a minute between you and the Lord. Pray this prayer and ask him to shine his light in your heart, to reveal anything that needs to be repented of, turned from, gotten rid of. Take a minute in prayer. Jesus, light of the world, shine your light, your Holy Spirit, into our hearts. Reveal what is there. If there's anything that is not of you, anything that is destroying us or anyone else, give us the courage to repent from it, turn from it, get rid of it, that we might walk in the light with you and know you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jesus is the light of the world. The Messiah is the light in the darkness showing us the way to go in all this life of confusion and darkness that he shows us the right way, the path. And he reveals what is in our hearts as he shines his light in our hearts. And the third thing, third significance of the light of the world is this, that Jesus gives spiritual life, hope, and joy. Think about the joy that comes to life, the hope that comes when there's light, when the sun is out. And some of you, are blind, spiritually speaking. And some people you know are blind, spiritually speaking. They cannot see the light. They cannot see Jesus. They do not know God. And it says, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4, the God of this age, which is, which is his reference to Satan, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So listen carefully to that. There is a spiritual element to all of this, he says. It's not just that some people are smart, some people are dumb, or some people are good, some people are bad. He says some people are blinded spiritually. They just can't see. It's like there's a veil covering their eyes and they cannot see the gospel. They cannot see the light of the gospel, it says. So one of the great ways you can pray for people who don't know God, just pray that God would lift the veil, that he'd reveal himself to them. He would shine his light in their hearts to give them the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Some of you are in darkness right now. You're blinded. If that is you, then ask the Lord to lift the veil that you might see and know him. And some of you are really struggling with hope and joy this morning. Some of you, maybe you know God, but you're not walking with hope and with joy. Think of the psalmists and how often they ask the Lord to shine his face in them, like this one, Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. The light of the world gives life. Spiritual life gives hope and gives joy. And if you this morning are struggling in that, feeling that depression, feeling that lack of hope, then pray along with the psalmist. Ask him for his light, to shine his light, his face on you. His light gives life. The amazing thing is that when there's, all this talk of prophecies of what heaven will be like, what it's going to be like to be with the Lord on that day. It says, we're not even going to need the sun. We're not even going to need any other lights because the Lord will be our light. All these lesser lights are to point to him, the joy, the hope, the life that he brings. Isaiah 60 says, 
The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and, the God, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful promise. And Revelation 22.5 echoes this. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of a sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. And so this morning, if you are without joy, without hope, without life, turn to the Lord, the light of the world who gives spiritual sight, spiritual life, hope, and joy. And this is our response. Our response is this, that we follow Jesus, the light of the world, by walking in his light and reflecting his light. Romans 13, Paul writes this, The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. He makes this contrast often between darkness and light and walking in the darkness and doing the things that are done in darkness and walking in the light, walking with Jesus according to his will. Ephesians 5 puts it this way. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what, is, what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. How do you respond to this, knowing that Jesus is the light of the world? The first thing is this, to walk in the light as he is in the light. Walk in the light. Do not walk in the darkness. Do not walk according to sin, according to the flesh, but walk in the light. And not just with him, but with each other. In 1 John 1 he writes, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie, and we do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Can I encourage you this morning, when we talk about walking in the light, it's not just between you and the Lord. It's between you and another person that you trust. Who knows you? Who knows your secret sins? Who knows the things that you do in the darkness? Does anybody know? How important it is to have somebody who knows us Somebody who we can confess to. Somebody that we can be completely open and honest with. Who will love us, pray for us, encourage us, hold us accountable. Jesus is the light of the world. And to follow him means walking in the light. With him and with each other. It doesn't mean we go telling everybody all of our stuff, right? It means you have someone that you trust that you can be honest with. Someone you can confess to. And finally, we walk in the light with him, with each other. And by letting our light shine before the world, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Now that we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, now that we know the light of the world, he says, go and reflect that light to the world as a city on a hill, letting your good deeds shine before men that they might praise your Father in heaven, that they might praise Jesus and know him, the light of the world. Let me ask you then this morning, how are you going to respond knowing that Jesus is the light of the world? For some of you, if you have been walking in darkness and you just don't even know God personally, please take this morning and ask him to lift the veil and reveal himself to you 
that his light might shine, that you might know him, that you might be saved. Some of you just need to pray and ask him to reveal what is on your heart, to deal with whatever's there, and turning in repentance and faith. Some of you need to be honest with another person. You know that there's things that are in the darkness that need to be brought to the light, to God and to someone else. Because when you bring things to the light, the power is broken over it. You know that? It's like the enemy has power over you as long as you keep it in the darkness. But when you bring things into the light, there's a power that is broken. As you walk in the light with God and with each other. And for some of you, it's about letting your light shine now before the world. Sharing the gospel, sharing the good news, loving in a way that reflects his love for you. Take a minute in silence between you and the Lord and consider what it is the Lord is calling you to this morning, how you are to respond to this message that he is the light of the world. And he calls you to walk in the light and to be the light of the world because he is in you. So take a minute between you and the Lord while the worship team comes up.